And uh, it's especially hot in here today, I feel. No? Don't worry, I don't do anything different for my sake, but... Um. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 6 in your Bibles there. Second Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to read a good portion here, uh, a good few verses. We'll pray and we'll get right into the message here this morning. The Bible says uh, we're continuing our series here in Walking with God, and, and uh, last week we started it and we talked about walking with God in likeness, and I started off trying to make a disclaimer that this church isn't about trying to make you religious, trying to get you to be a religious person, uh, trying to get you into a particular religion. Uh, We're here because uh, the reason we exist, this local church exists, is to introduce people to Jesus, first of all, uh, then help them along uh, to grow in their walk with God and then teach them uh, to do the same for other people. If uh, you've been saved, if you've uh, trusted Christ as Savior, uh, you've got a very special gift. You've got something that uh, is very important. You have entered into a relationship with a a personal Savior and God that uh, religion will never give anybody. Um. It is a relationship that we are trying to promote uh, at this particular uh, local church here. Uh, This is a place where somebody can uh, believe on Christ uh, by through salvation, uh, salvation by grace through faith. It is a place where somebody can uh, uh, belong to a committed uh, body of Christ uh, and then also become a committed follower of Jesus Christ. And so, in this message and continuing here, we're going to see another aspect of walking with God, Uh, walking with God, uh, particularly in partnership. And uh, that is one of the great aspects of being a Christian. Uh, God wants to partner with you. He didn't just create you, put you down on this earth and say, man, I hope you have a good life. I hope you uh, make some money. I hope you have a good uh, marriage, family, things like that, materialistic goods, and, and you're comfortable and content and all that stuff. No, God desires to partner with us in this journey of life uh, until we get to our destination, that eternal destination in heaven. And so we're going to see some of the aspects of this partnership that God desires to be uh, with us. And uh, I'm going to preface by saying this, what uh, level or uh, one of these uh, categories of relationship that you uh, fall in is determined upon which level of relationship you decide to be in. It's up to you. Uh, God desires... God desires uh, Uh, God desires to be, and we'll see this uh, final relationship, God desires to be your friend. He desires to be your God. He desires to be your Redeemer. He desires to be your Lord and Savior and uh, many other uh, 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 relationship uh, aspects, but He desires to be a friend of yours, to be with you, to go through, uh, to walk with you in partnership. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Now, this passage here, this is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to this church of Corinth to give us a little background here. Now, people in churches, uh, Bible preaching churches, uh, typically uh, are saved people. They make up, that's what a, a, a church is made up of. Uh, that's what a biblical church is made up of. Saved people uh, that have a desire to follow the Lord and be obedient to Him. And so Paul is writing to this church of Corinth in this passage here. And in, uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 1, um, we uh, see that uh, Paul uh, does a lot of correction. In uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, we see Paul does a lot of correction as well, but he does a lot of instruction and encouragement as well. And so we're going to see some of Paul's instruction to this church of Corinth, and uh, this is applicable for all of us here this morning, just to give you some introduction. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 13, 
Now for a recompense in the same a reason, I speak as unto my children. Be ye also enlarged, uh, be encouraged, be strengthened uh, w- with your influence perhaps. Look at verse number 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Um, Christ or Belial. Belial is another word for Satan, for the devil. What fellowship? You know, you don't have, you don't have uh, Jesus and Satan fellowshipping together, hanging out together. They're not buddies, okay? There's, uh, the emphasis is on the polar opposites. There's a, there's a definite difference between uh, the two here. Then verse number 16, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Uh, now, uh, a local church to me somewhat is synonymous with a, an Old Testament temple. Uh, back in the Old Testament, they had temples, and uh, there, was, there were priests that did their priestly duties. Uh, I'm thinking of Nacho Libre when I'm thinking about that. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, they did their priestly duties, and uh, uh, men, people would, uh, families, households, head of the households would bring their sacrifices to the temples, and the priests would receive those and, and do different uh, duties. They would receive that uh, sacrifice. Well, uh, we no longer do that today. We don't have priests that receive our sacrifices. Uh, the Bible says that when we get saved, we become a priest ourselves. And uh, so, um, we uh, have a local church, New Testament church, and uh, we bring sacrifices of tithes and offerings. We bring sacrifice of our services to the Lord. Our service to the Lord. Um, I believe assembling on Sunday, the first day of the week, is uh, one of the way, ways we offer a sacrifice to the Lord by acknowledging uh, that uh, particular day uh, to the Lord uh, out of holiness and reverence. Um, and so uh, we see the difference here between a, a temple. Uh, Paul is saying, what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Now that we're saved, we are a temple. We have the Spirit of God that lives in us, uh, take, took up residence in our lives, and uh, we, we're not our own. We're, we're a temple of God. God lives in us. This body is not my own. I should, I should be considerate of uh, what uh, I do with this physical body of mine, considering what God wants me to do with it, uh, because I am uh, a temple of His now. Uh, the same with you, if you've trusted Christ as well. Um, he says this, uh, the temple... Uh, of God with idols, if uh, for ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. He's talking about the unsaved. He's talking about the worldly. He's talking about those that are, that are opposite with uh, the, the, the things of God, the people of God. Uh, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now, there's a whole lot that's packed into that passage there, and I'm going to focus on uh, just a few truths uh, from there. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Maybe if, if questions come up later on, uh, keep those and... Uh, if I don't know them, I'll try to figure it out myself. I'll try to look to the Word of God and, and find those. But let's go ahead and pray, and we're going to get into the message here this morning. Father, I thank You for Your goodness. Lord, I thank You for Your love. I thank You for Your tender mercies. Lord, I thank You for Your many blessings. You've been so good. Lord, You're a good, You're a, You're a good as an understatement. You're great. You're awesome. And even those words are understatements, uh, of those adjectives, those descriptions of You, Lord, you're holy, you're righteous, you're just, you're loving and compassionate, and you have tender mercies towards us, and you think about us, and, and uh, you care about our every need, Lord, and, and uh, you're a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, Lord, and I, I, I love uh, being one of yours. God, I pray you'd work in hearts this morning, and God, I pray that you'd have your will and way, Lord, I pray that we would analyze and, and see where we may be with you uh, in our relationship uh, to you here this morning. Lord, Holy Spirit, would you search our hearts and, 
and uh, have your will and way, Lord. I pray you'd be pleased in all that's said and done. Lord, we thank you again for your bountiful blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. If you walk with God, I have a, uh, I have a friend, I haven't heard from him forever, uh, but uh, he gave me a gift. He was a, he was a kid, actually a teenage boy, that uh, was considering going to China uh, to the mission field to be a missionary there. And, and uh, I met him at a church in Pennsylvania as we were on deputation, and he had had that burden in his heart for some time. Well, uh, he ended up sending me a, a Christmas gift or something uh, in the mail, and I got this little uh, model sailboat. And on the sails of that model, it says, uh, the man who walks with God always arrives at his destination. And man, that, that's, a, that's an awesome saying there um, for anybody, uh, any Christian. And that's true. If, if we walk with God, we will get to our destination. We will get to the ultimate destination that God has for us. Now, I don't want to confuse anybody with uh, thinking that we're, we're just trying to get to a destination as Christians. Uh, yes, we're ultimately, uh, we get the, the, the promise of a home in heaven. Uh, what an awesome day that will be. What an awesome uh, uh, event that will be and, and e- for all of eternity. But uh, it's, that's, not the, that's not the means to the end necessarily. That's not just what we're trying to accomplish as being Christians. We are trying to, we should be trying to and desiring to walk with God. Brother Dave uh, had a great lesson this morning, some great truths, talking about uh, when people uh, have it in their mentality that, man, uh, I'm going to get my happiness from my wife, or uh, people try to get their happiness from their kids, or, or from their employer, from their employment, or, or something, something uh, horizontal of nature. Well, that's not what God has intended for us. God has intended our, our joy and happiness to come from Him. It's a vertical relationship that brings true, true joy and happiness. I'm going to fail my wife. She's going to fail me. My kids are going to fail me. They're going to go off and, and move away, and I don't know if I'll be with them, you know, in, in 10, 20 years or however long it's going to be. Uh, you know, so we can't, we can't derive our, our happiness from those uh, Hor- uh, horizontal things, uh, we need to derive joy. True joy comes from Christ. And so, uh, walking with God is how we're going to have that enjoyment in life. Now, I'm not talking about having kids to have happiness. I'm not talking about Christian friends to have happiness and joy, although they can bring happiness. They can bring joy, but not eternal joy, not eternal happiness. I'm talking about walking with God in partnership, and God isn't just trying to get me from point A to point B without any harm or uh, sad times in my life. No, God desires to walk with me from point A to point B and guide me and direct me and, and be with me in partnership. And that's, that's just so awesome. Another great thing about partnership with God is that uh, there are many promises in having Him along with us. I want you to consider this verse, Matthew 11. Matthew 11, uh, verse 29, the Bible says, Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want to illustrate this idea. This is somewhat uh, related to the message here, but uh, right off the bat, Paul says, "Be not, uh, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers." Uh, for illustration's sake, I need I need some examples. Um, Casey, could you come up here, please? And Brother Dave, uh, I had planned on. Uh, this is a this is a physical example. It's not very good because Casey is is tall herself. Uh, so uh, what I want you to do is uh, just could you could you maybe take a knee right here, Casey, and Brother Dave, be right next to her. And what I've got here is a who knows what this is. Shout it out. Yoke, shackle. Did you say shackle? Yeah. So there, there are different type, types of yokes. I'm not a, I'm not a, 
uh, expert on it or anything by any means, but I've seen a yoke. How many of you have seen the yoke where it has the indention in the wood and so the, the animal will get right here? Well, this one is a little bit different in that it holds on. These loops here, these shackles hold on to uh, the harness of the certain beasts. And so, uh, Brother Dave, you need to, I need you to stand to make a good illustration of this. Thanks. <clears throat> and so, uh, the Bible says, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Particularly, I believe the Bible's talking about marriage in this case, and so much wisdom to that. But to, to illustrate a spiritual, the spiritual unequal yoke, I want you to see this physical unequal yoke. Uh, oftentimes, Jesus, he used parables and stories to, uh, to illustrate these truths. And so, um, in the Bible times, when they would plow a field or, or uh, do some type of farm work of that nature, they had their animals. Oftentimes, it would be an oxen. Uh, sometimes, they would use a donkey as well. How many of you understand that? And um, different animals to perform different things. Now, a donkey and a, an ox are two totally, they got different strengths and different weaknesses. You understand that? Uh, a donkey, what is a donkey typically known for? Being what? Stubborn, Stubborn sure foot? Sure foot, okay. That's something i looking, thinking about, yeah. Um, sure foot, stubborn, kind of have a tendency to maybe want to do their own thing. Uh, different, uh, it's a different they're two different kinds, if you will. And so then an oxen is going to be what? More, more uh, stronger, more, uh, more just steady and even keel and, and uh, even temperament perhaps. And, and so there's an illustration that he's given here of being not unequally yoked uh, with, uh, uh, with unbelievers. And there's a reason for that, okay? I want you to imagine this is a yoke here. This right here is a, is a young uh, she's, I'm not trying to insult, but for illustration's sake, she's the donkey, okay, Casey? Uh, you're, <laughs> uh, maybe it's a good choice that I made for you to be the donkey then. And then we have uh, Brother Dave, he's going to represent the oxen. And so here's the yoke that we're going to try and put on these two totally different animals. Paul's saying, uh, the Lord is saying, don't do that. This is, can you hold this up here, Brother Dave? You hold yours and Casey, you can maybe hold the ring there. And uh, what he's saying is, uh, don't in this relationship of yoking with people, primary, uh, specifically here in the past, we're talking about marriage, but then it also can be applicable uh, to different relationships in life as well. There's great reasoning here. There's great, uh, there'd be so much heartache that'd be prevented if we did not uh, yoke up with unbelievers. How many of you know marriages that... Uh, 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 relationships that were not good because they didn't obey this principle. Okay, so we're trying to yoke these two up here. This, this is not a good yoke. You're not gonna, we're not going to accomplish uh, the work that we're trying to do, the, the job that needs to be done, uh, because this is not an uh, equal yoke. Well, uh, physically, it's not an unequal yoke as well, right? And so... Um, I want you to see that uh, picture here, but this is what God says about partnering with Him. Uh, God desires, and, and it's kind of a, it is a marriage relationship when a person gets saved because we are born into the family of God, uh, but, be, uh, but also we become the what? The bride of Christ. He becomes the, the bridegroom. Uh, we are the espoused uh, bride of Christ. When we get saved, we enter into this marriage relationship with the Lord. And how does it start? salvation. So there's not an unequal yoke. So anyway, uh, we have this yoke here, and God desires to enter into this yoke with us. Okay, you can stand up, Casey. Thank you very much. Um, just stand there for one moment, if you guys would. I think I may be finished with you, though. But uh, uh, Jesus says this in Matthew 11. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is like, you can have a seat, Casey. Thank you. Uh, and Brother, Brother Dave, you represent the Lord, okay? Oh, man, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Um, God, God invites us to get into this yoke with Him, and uh, I feel kind of lame doing that with you. <laughs> All right, you can be seated. You guys get the point, right? 
um, God invites us to get into this yoke with Him. And uh, I'm talking to us this morning about partnering with God. God offers Himself as a partner, a companion on this journey of life. And what an awesome thought. The longer I'm a Christian and uh, the older that I get and uh, the more I marvel in the fact that God desires to be with me. God desires to be with you. There's anything special about me that God would choose me over you. God wants to be in this yoke with you just as much as he wants to be in a yoke with me. He doesn't want me to beat myself into submission like some religions would teach. He doesn't want me to... To, uh, uh, to nail myself to a cross. You know there's actually religion. I think it's predominantly in the Philippines where they, they would do that. Somebody, they would nail themselves to a cross and they march in some kind of a parade. Uh, uh, God doesn't, God, there's no scriptural uh, reasoning for doing that. Uh, God desires to get in that yoke with us and see us along uh, in uh, from point A to point B and walk with us. God says in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. One of the great facets of God's personality is that He's given us a free will to choose. He didn't say, okay, I'm going to make you get saved. He didn't say, that, that'd be great if he did. He doesn't make us get saved. He wants us to get saved. He gives us tender mercies, and he woos us, and, and he lets us see uh, the goodness, and uh, he's given Christ as the example, uh, and, 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 and he made him as the payment for the sins of uh, the world, but he never forces us to do anything. In the passage we just read, we see the Apostle Paul as he instructs uh, this church of Corinth. And if you noticed, he makes mention of several different relationships that we can have with God. And so this morning, I want to just spend a little bit of time on each one of these relationships. And and, uh, God allows us to choose the level of relationship that we get to have with Him. Again, He doesn't force us. He doesn't force it on us, and He, he allows the, uh, us to choose the commitment that we desire to have with Him. And, and I was thinking about addictions this week, and I've heard of different things of, of drugs and instances of, of uh, I was just thinking about addictions, and some people are addicted to this substance. Some people are addicted to this substance, and, and they desire this, it makes them feel good or what have you. And, and I was just thinking, man, it'd be great. It'd be great if we got addicted to God. Get addicted to the things of God. Get addicted to this God that desires to partner with us. Get addicted to spending time with Him. Get addicted to, to putting away that, 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 uh, uh, the money that we'd waste away on that addiction there and, man, spend time with God. There are several different relationships that we can have with the Lord and uh, we can choose which ones we want to have with Him. This morning, I want you to see with me these different relationships, and I want you to apply this to which relationship you think you have with the Lord here this morning. Notice with me, first of all, I want you to notice that uh, as we um, are born, period, uh, we automatically enter or we can enter into this relationship, number one, that of a creator, that of a creator. You ever thought about that? Um, not everybody in, that's born are God's children. No, a person doesn't become one of God's children until they get born into his family. Uh, when a person gets born into the world, uh, they have God as creator. Uh, there are some that would deny that. Uh, the Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. And so there were some that deny the, the fact that there is a creator, but the Bible says we are without excuse from believing that. Uh, actually. So, uh, I want to focus here on number one, that of a creator. This relationship exists simply because we are born. Those that choose this relationship, whether directly or indirectly and ignorantly, can have a very happy and blessed life while they're here on this earth. What do you mean by that? Well, the Bible says this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. It says that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. You understand that? There are good people today. There are bad people today. 
Uh, and uh, the Bible says God allows the sun to rise on uh, the just and the unjust, uh, on the evil and the good. He sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Uh, we get to benefit. Even people that are not saved get to benefit from the blessings of God. Uh, you have air to breathe. They have, uh, uh, they have uh, warmth and, and shelter and, and things that only God provides and supplies. And uh, Don't get me wrong, though, here this morning. This is not a saved person. This is somebody that's been created. This is uh, somebody that knows uh, there's, there's a big man up above or uh, there is a creator. I believe, in, I believe there's a God but they've never personally entered into a relationship with Him. It says He sends the rain on the just and the unjust. He makes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. This person isn't necessarily a fool. They haven't rejected God. They don't, they don't believe there's not a God, uh, but they haven't been saved. They haven't been born into the family of God. And so how many of you know somebody like this? You know somebody that clearly you know they're not saved? Anybody? All right. Uh, but God has blessed them, maybe materialistically, financially, what have you. They experience blessings, uh, but they're not a believer. They haven't trusted Christ as Savior. So, number one, uh, there's the relationship of the Creator that we can have with God. Uh, number two, uh, there is a second relationship here that I want you to notice. It is that of Redeemer. Now, here's where it starts to get good. The Bible says in Psalm 19, verse 14, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. And this is what God desires. God doesn't just desire to be your creator only. God desires to be our redeemer. God desires to be our savior. Uh, the Bible says that uh, it is uh, not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come uh, to repentance. Uh, and so God wants everybody. God wants to be the redeemer of everybody. But he gives us that free will to choose whether or not we will become redeemed by the grace of God. When a person gets born again, God becomes their redeemer. They become God's redeemed. And uh, people who settle for this relationship, uh, they, they will go to heaven when they die, but, but that's pretty much it. There's not that victorious Christian life, and Brother Dave talked about this in his class too. There's not that victorious or abundant Christian life that God desires for us to have. Yes, He wants to save us. He doesn't want us to go to hell, but He just doesn't want us to save us and, and uh, put us off to the side and not have a relationship with us. No, He desires to walk with us. He desires to yoke up with us. He desires to be our Redeemer. When we get in that yoke, that's when we're in the redeem. That's when we're redeemed, and, and, but God desires to, uh, he, he desires to be the head ox, I guess, if we can maybe put it in that term, uh, the shepherd. Um, and so, I want to say this, if, uh, if you're here this morning, or if uh, you just know uh, Christ, you just know uh, that he, there is a creator, I want to encourage you to get redeemed. I want to encourage you to trust Jesus Christ, acknowledge uh, uh, that you're a sinner, and Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins so that we don't have to pay that penalty of dying and going to hell, but He wants to give us eternal life. He made the payment. He shed His blood. His Son was the payment that washes the sins of the world away, but we need to personally receive Him as our Savior, apply that payment to our accounts, and that's how we get redeemed. Amen? A person can be redeemed and, and they not experience the victory that God desires uh, uh, to have uh, them to have in their lives. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14, if any man's work abide which he hath built there, uh, thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself, he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Uh, God says this, he says there's some people that are going to get saved, and uh, uh, when they get to heaven, they're not going to have any rewards to show for it. They're not going to have any, any crowns to cast at the feet of the Savior and, and give Him in that worship. That's not what God wants for us. God does want us to be redeemed. He does want us to be saved, but He desires more in our lives with Him 
as well. And so this person has established no further relationship with God, but they will get to heaven. Let me ask you this morning, what category do you find yourself in? Is it creator or are you in the redeemer part now? Has He become your Redeemer? Have you personally accepted Him as your Redeemer? I want you to notice the third relationship that we can have this morning. And the third relationship is that of God. That of God. And look at our passage here in verse number 16. The Bible says this, "...and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols?" Uh, For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And so, uh, I believe uh, the Bible teaches that this happens when a person decides that, uh, yes, they're redeemed, they've trusted Christ as Savior, but now they want to acknowledge and, and they want to they wanna separate from uh, some of those things that, that don't uh, help them spiritually. And they want to show God uh, separation. Uh, what's, a, what's another word uh, that I'm looking for here? Uh, sanctification. Uh, they want to be set apart for the good things of God that God has in store for them. They, they, they realize, man, they got saved from that junk, that lifestyle, that, uh, that, that worldly way of living, and, and back over there, that's, that's the old pit, that's the old uh, uh, hog pen, that's the, uh, that's the muddy area that, that didn't help me in my, uh, in my relationship with God, it didn't help me spiritually, positively at all. So they, they've identified, man, that's, that's not something that's, that's beneficial to me spiritually. And so, God, I want you to be my God. How can I, how can I uh, please you with my life? The Bible says this, in John three thirty six: he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Folks, that's, that's what the Bible says. That's what the Word of God says. No, if if all uh, uh, God is to us when we die is we're our Creator, we won't get to heaven. If God is our Redeemer when we die, we'll go to heaven. Yes. However, we can have uh, God as our Redeemer, but still be in the wrong crowd, still do the wrong things, still do foolish things that don't help us out uh, spiritually in life. And and uh, until we identify and recognize uh, some of those things, we'll never have that relationship of of God, Him as our God, if I can put it that way. Hope I'm not confusing anybody here. Um, I want you to notice a fourth relationship. A fourth relationship we can have is that of Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. So, uh, saved people uh, can have the relationship of Redeemer. They can have the relationship of Him as God, and, and I, He's my Redeemer. Yes, He's my God. And uh, But number four, uh, he's also my heavenly father. Second Corinthians, look at verse number 17. The Bible says this, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a what? Father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. I always have a father in my life. I had stepdads, and um, my, my first stepdad was the one that was the most father to me than, than even my biological dad. Well, and I, I think that I missed out on some things, and, and anybody that's grown up not having a father figure in their home, you've, you've missed out on some things that, uh, what's the statistic? Uh, over some 50% of uh, inmates, it's be they were fatherless people. Um, and uh, there are consequences or negative things that happen as a result of that. But I want to say this, if you've never had a, a physical father, an earthly father, you can have a heavenly father. And he can fulfill all the needs and, and everything that a, 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 a physical father could never even, you could never hope to imagine from a physical father. God desires to be our father 
He says, touch not the unclean thing, I'll receive you, and I'll be a father unto you. Put away those, uh, those bad habits, those sinful activities. Start showing him. Uh, we need to start showing him that we want to bear his name and, and be glad to be, uh, that we belong to him. You know, uh, one of the aspects or relationships of, of having a father is I had a grandpa, and uh, I didn't want to let my grandpa down. I remember, uh, I remember when I was a teenager, I remember one night being out, Man, I we were partying. I got I got I got back home. I was had graduated high school, but I got back home like two or three in the morning. I remember, and and I, it was a it was Friday night, so you know what's the big deal, I guess. And well, um, I uh, got home like three very late, and I remember about seven o'clock that Saturday morning, my grandpa grabbing the sheets, the blankets, and throwing them out of the bed there, and wake, wake up, boy. It's, we got to go outside and do some work here. He didn't, he wasn't like that mean about it. Uh, he wasn't yelling like that, but uh, to have any negative, to know, that I, to know that I disappointed my grandpa like that, it just crushed me. And I remember him kicking me out of bed, telling me to go, we got work to do, and there was always something to do at the house there out out in the desert, and, and I remember working with him and thinking, man, why can't I be like the other guys, you know? And I'm sure I had three or four friends that got to sleep in that Saturday uh, morning and such and, and all that. But all that to say, I didn't want to let my father down. And I believe we enter in this relationship with him as father. We, we have this relationship with him as father when, when we identify and understand that we, we bear his name. I'm a Christian. I want to represent my father well by not doing some of those things that would bring shame to his name. Number five, I'm going to hurry here, but the fifth relationship I want you to notice that we can have, and I have all of these relationships, and, and I'm, if you're saved, you there should be, uh, not always, I guess, but I want to encourage you that these are relationships that you can have with the Lord Number five is this, the Lord. Um, we don't believe in lordship salvation, meaning that in order to get saved, you have to make uh, Jesus, you got to make him be the Lord of your life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that uh, in order to get saved, I've got I've to make sure that I'm walking the line, keeping it, you know, tight and, and, uh, and, uh, and shooting straight and all this. No. Uh, salvation, being saved, isn't dependent upon how you live your life. Being saved is dependent upon receiving Christ as your personal Savior. And so uh, this relationship of Him being Lord is this. It's the idea of a master and servant. The master and servant. Uh, of course, with Him being the master. And um, so, <clears throat> listen to this. John 20, verse 27 it says this, Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and uh, reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said, My Lord and my God. He called him two of these descriptions here. He said, My Lord and also my God. And so Jesus already is Lord. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords, but He allows you to determine if you are going to allow Him to be the Lord of your life. Does that make sense? If you are going to allow Him to be master, if you're going to take your marching orders from King Jesus, from the Lord uh, God Almighty, the Bible says in Revelation 19, 16, and the, He hath on His vesture and on His thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. 1 Timothy 6.15 says this, Which in uh, times we shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. This relationship of him as Lord uh, with Christ uh, and the title of Christ is one of not just leaving the negative things and not just with identifying with Jesus, but it's one of servitude. It's one of the relationship of, of, of serving God out of thankfulness. Not serving God so that you can earn anything, but God, because you've done so much for me, because I'm so thankful for your goodness in my life, I, wanna, I want you to be my Lord. Lord, I, wanna, I want you to 
tell me what to do. Lord, I want to I wanna be obedient to what you have for me today. God, uh, who do you want me to marry? Lord, who do, uh, what, what is the career path or what is the calling that you have for my life? I want to be obedient to my Lord. Lord, I'll read my Bible. Lord, I'll pray. Lord, I'll witness for you. And Lord, I'll live my life in appreciation to you. And uh, uh, God becomes our Lord when we do what He tells us to do and we're obedient to His will. The Bible says this in Luke 6, 46. uh, Jesus scolding His disciples. Listen to this. He says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? We're obedient to... We're acknowledging that He's Lord in our lives. And lastly, and we're finished right here, we've seen several relationships. Uh, we've seen uh, that of Creator. Uh, we've seen a relationship, uh, that of Redeemer, when we get saved. Number three, uh, uh, Him being God. Uh, number four, He's a Heavenly Father. Number five, He is Lord. And then number six, the relationship of this, and this is the most fun to me. The relationship of a friend. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my friend from day to day. Without him, I would fall. I'm glad it's not that tune. (laughs) James 2.23 says this, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Abraham was called the friend of God. I want to ask you this morning, could it be said of you that you are a friend of God? Now, there are certain activities and certain things that friends do, right? I mean, I'm uh, typically a friend. You have uh, some similarities. You have some likes. Uh, You have some some things that you like and dislike and things like that, and um, you enjoy certain things together. I enjoy a, a, uh, a football team with my brother and our relationship, our brotherhood. We both like the Steelers. Um, amen? Uh, we, like to, we like to hunt uh, we like to do we like to do different things we're we're outdoorsmen for the most part uh, um, and things like that but but there's certain things that that you do with a with a friend and I just want to illustrate this whole idea of it's such a privilege we're not trying to promote a I'm not going to do anything spectacular with this okay um, there's not a good safe spot I can cast this I just want to il- illustrate things I like doing with certain friends. Uh, Brother Todd Monaghan will be here uh, this next Sunday, and he loves to fish. He's addicted to fishing. I wish he was addicted to God as, he is, uh, as much as he is addicted to fishing. Um, you can tell him I said that, and we'll see. Um, but anyway, um, he likes to do that. I've, I've been fishing with him. We like to fish. I like to fish with my brother. I'd like to fish with anybody that wants to take me. But certain things I like to do in, the, in that friendship relationship, you get to, you can choose if you want to be in this relationship with your God. It doesn't just have to be, you know, yeah, he's, he's holy, God is holy, and I revere him, and I, and I, I, want, to, uh, I want to honor him, his name, but, but God invites me to spend a day with him. He invites me to spend every day with him. He didn't, he didn't just say, okay, man, I hope you have a good day today when you wake up, Sam. Thank me for the, thank me for the air that I gave you this morning uh, all day. Thank you for the, the food that I'm going to provide for you today. And, and I ought to be thankful in those things, but God wants to go through the day with me. He wants to spend that time with me. If I can uh, be with a friend, I, I'll, I'll go fishing with my boys and you know, it's, 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 uh, it's always fun to be together, uh, but it's more fun when we're catching stuff too. We're not, you know, bummed out when we're finished. And, uh, but God desires to be with us. He desires, if I can, I, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to lessen His holiness by any means. I don't think I am. But God wants to be that fishing buddy. God wants to be that driving 
buddy. God wants to be that, uh, that person as you're going through that negative circumstance. God wants to help you in that promotion. God wants to uh, be there with you. He, he wants you to have faith in Him and constant fellowship and communion, not just uh, uh, once a, every quarter when you take uh, the Lord's Supper and communion here at the church. No, God wants to spend the day with you. I'm overwhelmed that He uh, would, would have such love for me. To Him I'm worth saving, and my life is craving to know Him in His righteousness and understand His way every day in every way. I'm amazed. We need to sing that song in here uh, sometime in the future. Uh, I got this fishing pole when we were on deputation. I uh, used it in a few different states, but government's got its hand in everything in this place, and so you need licenses in a lot of places where you go. You know, you don't need a license in Hawaii to go fishing. Awesome. You want a closer relationship with God today, you can choose to be his friend. We become his friend by adding this, by adding strong belief and trust to the equation. You have trust in your friend, trust in my spouse, trust in my brother, trust in brother Dave, trust in close friends. How is somebody your friend? You, you confide in them. You have similarities with them. What do you do when you're a friend to someone? There's a relationship. There's communication. There's interest. Well, the same way with God being a friend. There's communication. They're sharing likes, dislikes, struggles, griefs. God, God's there for you. He desires to be your friend. The day this happens is a happy day. When a person becomes a friend of God, he finds joy in the Christian walk. You remember the first time you devoured God's Word? You remember the first time you wept reading in God's Word? You remember when the, the, the songs of God made you tear up because of, of God's goodness in your life? You remember the first time you spent in your prayer closet when you weren't done with your list in 30 seconds, but you actually couldn't get enough time being with Him? When God becomes your friend, prayer ceases to be an obligation, but becomes a wonderful season with God. Once you establish that friend relationship with God, you begin to partner with him. Now, I'm just going to summarize these relationships in my life here so you can maybe see them uh, somewhat. And I tried, I think you could maybe go back and do this uh, with yourself here. It may be helpful. But I want to ask you this When did you see these relationships take shape in your life? In uh, June 12th, 1976, I just did some simple math here. Nine months before I was physically born, God became my creator. Well, actually, actually, before that, actually, he says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God knew me before I was ever physically created in my mama's womb. Well, that's when he became my creator. Well, maybe when I was, when I was born, March 12th, 1977, that is when God became my creator. Let's put it there, okay, uh, for uh, illustration's sake. February 27th, 1986, God became my redeemer. That's when I understood that I was a sinner, and I called on God, and I asked Him to save me. God saved me, and He became my Redeemer. 1998, 1999, in Las Vegas, Nevada, God became my God when I decided I wanted the, the God-fearing crowd. Yeah, I still love people that aren't saved, and I, I, wanna, I want them to get saved, and, and I still have friends that are not saved, and I, I want them to get saved, and I prayed for them to be saved, but but unsaved lifestyles and people that aren't living for God don't help me live for God. And so I need to use wisdom, and, and, uh, and uh, that's when he became my God, 1998, 1999, if I could put it out there that way. Shortly after that, I, I decided I wanted to do something for God. I wanted to live my life for God, and he became my Lord. You following me? Lord, if you want me to tell people about you, I'll do it. I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to do it. I'm not experienced. I don't know the verses to share with people. 
I'll, I'll do, I can give them a gospel tract, and that explains how they can get saved. Whatever you want me to do, God, I, I surrender. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. He became my Lord. And I think of that, this relationship that I desire to have with Him on a daily basis. I think of that a friend. Today I stand here desiring to be a friend to God, a friend with God. It isn't enough that I get to do something for God and, and that He can use me. Those are awesome things, but and He doesn't want me to use me for things. He, he desires a relationship with me. You ever have a friend that, you know, they use you for something? You got some goods or something, and, and you know that they're only buddy-buddy up to you because of something cool you have, you know? Who's got a boat? I, I imagine people... <laughs> Uh, I imagine you got a lot of friends when you got a boat, huh, uh, <laughs> Brother Don? Um, God's got the plan. God desires to, to, to work in your life, and God desires to be your friend. This morning, in closing, two important facts regarding partnering and serving uh, God. Number one, you have to agree on God's plan. Number two, God's purpose. It's not our plan. The, the master doesn't tell the servant. I mean, I mean the, the servant doesn't tell the master uh, what to do. The master does what the, what the, the servant does what the, what the master says. It's God's purpose. The Bible says in verse number 15, And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. God's got the plan, and He's got the purpose. He doesn't change it for us necessarily. We need to adjust to Him. Uh, my old homiletics teacher said this, God's will ought to be like a transparency and a grading key in our lives. Uh, it ought to line up perfectly at the end. <laughs> when we're in this relationship scale with God, I want to ask you, what, what partnership are you with Him today? Is He just your Creator have you made Him your Redeemer? Are you 100% certain that if you died, you'd go to heaven today? Or do you have some doubt? Let's pray. Father, I thank You for Your goodness. Lord, I thank You for these different aspects.